Hello YouTube, this is Braden with Midwest Websites, your solution for business website design and search engine optimization. Looking for a reliable hosting plan to set up your WordPress website? Check out our variety of Linux hosting plans for everything you'll need to get started. Link in the description below. Now with some WordPress websites, you're going to have multiple people working on them for one reason or another. Maybe you've hired a professional blogger to start writing posts. Maybe you've expanded your company a bit and have someone who's managing one element of your website, someone else managing another, while you manage the overall website structure and planning. In order to make sure that you're presenting the smallest amount of risk when multiple people are working on your website, it's important to know how to change user permissions within WordPress. We're going to be going over a couple different ways to do this. One is going to be in the WordPress admin dashboard, where you have full access to everything you're going to need. And we're also going to cover how to change this information in your database as well. If you have someone who's gone rogue and is causing trouble, but doesn't have access to your database itself. As you can see here, we've got a WordPress website set up already on example.midwestwebsites.com, and I've gone ahead and created three users. I'm set up right now as test user 2 in this list of three users on the screen here. And we're going to start working with the user permissions for test user. Now this is pretty straightforward. You can't modify permissions for the user that you're logged in as in WordPress, but for any others that you have editing permissions for as an administrator, you'll just scroll down here to the role section for your user that you've selected to edit. And you can choose to toggle their options between subscriber, contributor, author, editor, or administrator. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what each of these entails as they're actually pretty self-explanatory. Administrators have the ability to go in and do pretty much what they'd like in a single website installation. Editors have the ability to go in and make edits. Authors can just create new content. Contributors and subscribers are the lowest level with the fewest amount of permissions. WordPress goes into more detail about this on their roles and capabilities page. I'll have a link to this in the description below for you, so you can take a look at what all each permission level provides when you're giving someone access to your website. Now, if your website has been compromised or if someone you've been working with is trying to steal your content or lock you out, as long as you have access to the database directly, I've got this set up in a cPanel here, so we're going to use that as our example. You can actually go in and change the permissions with just a single line of code. Now, finding this code isn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world. There are a lot of different resources out there for this, and WordPress has changed an awful lot in the last several years. So some methods have you doing extra steps you don't need, some methods have incorrect information. So we're going to set the record straight with what you should be doing if you're trying to change user permissions within WordPress's database. First things first, we need to go into phpMyAdmin. We'll just search PHP in our search bar and cPanel. Depending on your hosting environment, it may be located in a different spot. Not a big deal if it is. Just reach out to your hosting provider if you aren't sure of where this section is to go in and work with your website. Once you're in, you're going to go ahead and click on the name of your database, and we're going to be looking first at the WP users table. As you can see here, we have all three of our users, and each has their own ID number. We're going to be changing the permissions for the regular test user, so we're going to be looking for information on ID 2. Now, this ID can be found in the user meta table, as you can see here, we've got a bunch of different sections, but this user ID is going to show us which user they pertain to. A lot of these aren't particularly important for what we're going to be doing. And as you can see, they're mostly laid out in order of user ID here. If you need to arrange them, you can also click on user ID specifically if you want to go ahead and make sure everything is set to pull in user ID order. Now, the section we're going to be looking for for user ID 2 is going to be WP underscore capabilities. Now this may look a little different depending upon how your WordPress installation is set up, specifically with your database prefix. 
this WP underscore here is going to match what is on the left hand side for your tables for WP underscore. In order to go in and change this, we're going to go ahead and edit this particular line in WP underscore user meta. And there are a few different types of code that you can use to go in and modify this. If you're using a particularly old WordPress installation or you have a plugin that was based on particularly old WordPress architecture, you may need to work with WP user levels. This is really, really rare to work with in today's environment since WordPress has not officially supported this since version 3, which was released many years ago. So don't worry too much about the WP user level if you're using a guide that references that. You're going to be specifically focused just on this WP underscore capabilities section. Now, as you can see on my screen, I've laid out the code for each of the different types of permission levels. This first one here is for administrator permissions, editor permissions, author permissions, contributor permissions, and subscriber permissions. This bottom one here, you may also see in your database instead of this one for administrator, the way that it's laid out in this particular table, it's just two different ways of saying the same thing. So don't worry if you're seeing this line of code or this line of code for your administrator permissions. Both should work in most cases. So in this case, if I wanted to go in and make test user a subscriber, we'd just delete what's in here, make them a subscriber, which will give them the fewest amount of permissions. Click the go button at the bottom to save our change. And if we jump in to WordPress admin and refresh the page, you will see that our good friend test user up here is now a subscriber. And that covers how to change user permissions in WordPress. It's not too tricky, but you do need to know what code you need and where to put it. Thanks as always for watching this video. I'll have the different permission codes in the description below for you so that you can change them as you see fit without having to hunt them all down or type them into a notepad yourself. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It definitely helps the channel, definitely helps us get this information out to those who need it, and have a great rest of the day.